Hello everybody. So I didn't get quite everything done on the mower that I wanted to get done this week and I figured instead of trying to rush through and just pump out a quick video or skip the week entirely, I could use this as an opportunity to sit down and explain to you who I am, what I do, how I got to where I am, what I plan on doing with this, and what I plan on doing afterward. So to start with myself, my name is Jake. I live in South Texas in the greater San Antonio area. I was born and raised here. I went to high school north of San Antonio, and that's where I got most of my welding experience. It's where I first learned I had a fantastic teacher, and that's really where I just fell in love with metalwork, welding, and using my hands, being creative, and just building things in general. Uh, so in high school, I did competition welding. I built barbecue pits for our county shows, and it was involved in what's called the ag mechanics section of the basically livestock show. So instead of raising cows or sheep or pigs, I built barbecue pits, and I'd take them to the county show and compete with other people that built barbecue pits, restored tractors, built birdhouses, and just about anything you could build with your hands could be involved in the ag mechanics part of the show. So. I did uh, two barbecue pits my junior and senior year of high school. After graduating, a lot of my welding was just strictly work related. Uh, I'm in the shopping cart industry, so that's something, right? Uh, yeah, I'm in the shopping cart industry. Uh, it's niche, it's very small, but there's always something to do. I find it very interesting. I'm very enveloped in it. I know everything about shopping carts for the most part. Um, and I, I love doing it. It's a family business. Uh, I've been with the company for 13 years now, going on 14 years. Um, and I've been doing that for a long time. I lived out in Houston for about uh, a total of two years. It was two separate times I lived out there. Didn't love it. I kept coming back to San Antonio. Um, and in September of last year is when I finally broke down and really started my YouTube channel. It's when I filmed my first video. Uh, I'd had the idea to do a YouTube channel for a long time. Uh, I just never bit the bullet to say. Uh, but I keep having all these like ideas, things that I want to do, things I want to build, things I want to create, modify, all of that stuff. But I have a hard time keeping myself to my projects. When I'm off in my own little world, I'll get right in the middle of a project and I'm just having tons of fun and I lose interest kind of out of nowhere. And I tend to set a project to the side and I'll start something else that interests me. But that drives me crazy at the same time, even though I'm the one doing it. Uh, so I figured starting my YouTube channel, it's a great way to document my process, document my projects, uh, and also kind of keep my nose to the grindstone. It keeps me um, interested in the stuff. Uh, I think I may have lost interest in this over time if I wasn't recording it and sharing it with everybody. Uh, so getting all this feedback on projects is it's a huge benefit to this process of, of putting stuff up on YouTube. Um, I love reading the comments. I read all of them. Uh, a lot of people have uh, great questions. They have great input. Um, and I take it into consideration. Uh, one of the things that I do need some help with from y'all, I'm sure I could figure it out myself, but y'all may have um, a harebrained idea that I may not come up with on my own. On the exhaust for this mower here, it gets pretty tight up in there. The exhaust port is right next to the intake port on the block, and there's not a whole lot of room to pipe my exhaust out of there. So in just a second, I'll bring you over there and I'll show you what I'm talking about, and maybe one of you could help me figure something out for it. So, onto this, this project right here. Uh, this is the first big project I've taken on since I started the channel. Um, I stumbled across it, my neighbor down the street had just set it out at his curb one day about a week after starting my channel. And I almost thought it was a mistake just because it looked pretty decent. So I went and knocked on his door. I asked him what he was doing with it. He said he was throwing it away. So I asked him if I could buy it from him and he told me that I could just have it, which is even better. So I put it in neutral, rolled it down to the house, um, and a couple weeks later I had it up here. That was the first time I was working with it, and we pulled the mower deck out, pressure washed the whole thing. 
Uh, and then obviously y'all know what I do with it after that. Uh, but my future plans with it right now, obviously we're in the middle of slamming it and that's so much more labor intensive than I ever imagined. Just throwing that out there. Uh, and that may be the, the process that I took, the, pro the steps that I decided on. Uh, it could be me just being very particular and wanting everything a certain way and not wanting to just make it work. Uh, but I wanted to do it my way. I'd, I'd like to do it right. Uh, I don't want to have to constantly repair this after every time I test drive it. I would rather overbuild it and take my time and be able to just have fun with it once I'm done. Because that's the whole goal, just to have fun. I had originally planned on making a fast lawnmower and my wife told me if I made it any faster than I did already, I was going to have to buy a helmet and wear a helmet to drive it. So for right now, that's when I decided to just lower it. Uh, so it's going to stick at around the, oh, what was it? I think it was like 14 miles an hour, something like that, 15, 16 miles an hour. It was in the ballpark. It was a quick jog. Uh, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. In the future, if I get the itching to make it go any faster, I will, and I'll get a helmet. I'm not saying safety is not a concern of mine, uh, but I just think if I can avoid wearing a helmet, I will. I'm not a fan of helmets. I'm not a fan of ear protection, although I, I understand that it's a necessity. It's very important, and I do use it when it's needed, but I don't like it. Uh, I don't like gloves. I don't know if anybody's noticed that yet. I hate gloves. I like having the tactile feedback that the human fingers offer. It's the best way to make sure that my hands are where I think they are, that I know what's going on, I can feel what's going on. It's just, it's a lot better for me. Um, where was I going with that? Jeez, that was a tangent. Um, hmm. Oh yeah, the helmet. So, uh, yeah, I don't plan on making it go any faster right now. Uh, as of right now, I'm gonna work on finishing up the body work. I'm gonna wire everything in. I need to get my exhaust done. And I wanna make this drivable. And the seat, that's another big thing. So, I did find a stadium seat. That's what I had mentioned before that I wanted to get a stadium seat because I thought it would be the perfect dimensions to fit in here, in this seat bay, if you will. Um, but when I got the stadium seat, it's just, it's, it's cheaper looking than I remembered. It's a little bit flimsier than I remembered. Uh, the way that's manufactured, the vertical pipes that hold the backrest on are like offset, so they're both on the right side of the tubing that comes up from the seat. I just don't like that. It's not aesthetically pleasing. The whole thing is off-centered. It just throws me off. Uh, so I might use that, I'll probably use that as a temporary seat, uh, but I would really like to build a custom seat, and that may be down the road. I may outsource it. I have a great interiors guy uh, that's not far from here that's done some work for my dad. Um, and that would really be the cat's meow, if you will, if I could have a custom seat made that fits this perfectly, that's the shape I want, the size I want, the color I want. I think that would just be awesome. But again, that's somewhere in the future. For right now, I got the stadium seat. I think that'll hold up for uh, testing, things like that. Um, so, body work, electrical, exhaust, and a seat, and that will get everything functional. After that, I do have plans to pull the body off, sandblast everything, and I would really like to do like a candy red color on all the metal, and then the black nose, the black console, and all of the frame the lower frame stuff is all going to be a gloss black or maybe a matte black or somewhere in the middle like a satin. I'm not sure yet. Let me know in the comments if you can think of anything better or if you got a preference on one of those. I'd like to know. But um, yeah, so once I get everything mechanically working on it and then I get it painted, I think I'm most likely going to call it good on this and I'll move on to the next project. Uh, like I said, I got a lot of ideas and that was the whole reason for the channel is to get these ideas out there just to, to bring them to fruition if you will uh, so there's a couple things I have uh, a fun idea for a security system I have a 94 Ford Ranger 
and those things are notorious for being broken into. It's extremely easy to break into a 90s model Ranger. Um, so to prevent the actual theft of the vehicle, I, I don't, I can't think of a great way to prevent the breaking in to the vehicle. If anything, I would like to leave that as an option so that they don't just bust a window, they can just do the old Ranger trick. But to keep the truck from being actually stolen, removed from the property, I have a pretty cool idea to use a keypad. It's originally meant for like electrical equipment, a conveyor or a, a carousel, something of that nature, where you put a passcode in to supply voltage to a circuit to be able to use the machine. It's for, um, in retail settings, they use it so that an employee can use a machine that's mounted in the showroom floor or in the customer's area without the customer being able to walk up and use the machine also. So my idea with that is to essentially run my ignition wire from my key through that circuit board and then out to where it's supposed to go. So in order to send voltage from my ignition to my coil, I would have to first put in the passcode and then it would allow me to start the vehicle. So that's one of my ideas that I've been tossing around for a long time. I would love to do it just for the fun of it and for the sake of my own personal security. Keep my truck from getting stolen. It's not bad. Um, the next big project after this is going to be a golf cart. So I have uh, an EasyGo golf cart. I think it's a 98. Speaking of which, on the 98 note, I've been saying this whole time that this mower is a 1998 Murray LT1000 wide body riding lawn mower. When in actuality, it came off the floor in late 2000. I think it was around the 300th day of 2000 that this thing rolled off the floor. So I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. So anyways, that's not that it even matters, but I just wanted to clarify. It's not a 1998. This is a 2001. So I just want to clarify. It's not a 1998. This is a 2000. My golf cart is a 1998. So back to the golf cart. I have a 98 Easy Go workhorse. It's the single bench seat with a little dump bed on the back. It was originally an electric unit. I got it from an auction for I think $200, uh, thinking it was just a, a bad gas engine unit. And then when I went to pick it up, I realized it was uh, electric. And somebody had already taken the motor out of it and all the batteries and most of the wiring. So with that, I happen to have a Honda GX390 sitting around that was off an old pressure washer. And I'm gonna put the GX390 into the golf cart. I'll have to build a carriage with some mounts to the frame so the engine stays on the same plane as the axle. But I took a, I found another easy go motor. I was able to get the shaft out of that motor and I had it turned down to one inch diameter and I had a key groove cut into it. So now I can use that motor shaft as basically a jack shaft to connect to my axle and then run a chain to my engine, to my torque converter. Um, so with that, uh, I also have a Polaris 6x6 transmission that's going to go in that. That'll give me forward neutral reverse. And maybe somewhere down the distant road, I'll be able to put a live front axle in it and have a four-wheel drive gas-powered golf cart. Uh, so that's another one I'm really excited for. That's going to be another long project, kind of like this one. That one may be a little bit longer. It's going to be more uh, labor intensive. It'll be probably more in depth, hopefully. Uh, but I'm excited about it. And hopefully you are too. Let me know. Um, so outside of that, I mean, that's my goals for the channel as a whole, really, uh, is just to take my ideas that I have and turn them into something that I can look at, something I can hold, something I can use, um, and just play around. I love building things, I love making things, um, I love using my hands, I love metalwork, I love fixing things. So anything in that vein is gonna be most likely something you're gonna find on this channel. Uh, I try to produce the best quality content I, ha I can with the materials and the resources I have. Uh, so up until now, uh, which is not changing anytime soon, but as of now, and since I started the channel, everything has been filmed on an iPhone 13. Uh, I think it's a 13 Pro, I'm not sure, the one with the three cameras. Um, but it seems to be working out great. It's 4K. Uh, the only issue I really run into filming on the iPhone is uh, storage. So it's a 250 gigabyte or 256 gigabyte uh, hard drive on the phone. 
and that fills up rather quickly with 4K videos. Uh, so that's the only thing I've really run into is every, uh, uh, I would say every probably uh, five or six hours worth of footage that I get, uh, I gotta take it off of my phone, put it on an external hard drive just to save it uh, and free up space on my phone for more filming. Uh, but outside of that, uh, I got a microphone. I have a directional microphone. It's a Rode, uh, I don't remember the name, but it's a Rode directional microphone. It was, I think like $100 in that region. Uh, I'll put a picture here. But uh, that made a huge difference in the sound quality of my videos. I noticed that immediately. And this weekend, tomorrow actually, I'll be ordering a new microphone. So I'm going to get a lavalier microphone. It'll clip onto my shirt or jacket. I'll have a battery pack hooked on me. And the other end will be connected to my phone. And I think that's going to really help me out with uh, balancing the sound quality. That's one of my biggest issues when I'm editing video is just trying to maintain the quality of sound throughout the video. Especially getting into these longer videos in the 20 to 30 minute, 40 minute area uh, it's, it's hard to take in 30 minutes of video and the last five minutes be remarkably similar to the first five minutes you just you lose a lot of uh, consistency over that much editing but I think with the lavalier microphone it'll be more consistent sound uh, because the microphone will stay a certain distance away from me as opposed to having to adjust for the microphone being 10 feet away from me in this frame 15 feet away from me in that frame, not paying attention at all. If I look in the other direction and talk, it hardly picks it up. Uh, so I think that's gonna be a huge benefit to the channel. I've also thought about uh, putting the audio file through a program to try to level it out and get it all to one uh, harmonious level. But uh, I don't know, as of right now, I'm just doing everything free pretty much. I don't wanna have to pay for a program uh, I'm using iMovie and the free PDF editing app and I really only use the PDF editing app for my shorts because the free version will only give you 1080p resolution. Uh, iMovie puts it out in 4K. I would like to stay with that for now until I am able to pay for like the full Adobe experience then I would absolutely do that. Um, and another thing is the audio library. Uh, so far I've been using the YouTube audio library and sometimes I feel like I'm uh, either overusing a song or using the, uh, like the wrong tone of, this, uh, of a song for the particular part of the video. Uh, so in that case, I, there's a lot of audio products you can use. Uh, but that is one of the things that I will be leveling up to in the future, hopefully the near future, especially if I can get monetized anytime soon, all of that would go right back into investing in the channel. Uh, I would eventually down the road like to get a nice camera where I can swap out SD cards instead of having to airdrop to the computer and then transfer to an external hard drive. Um, so I'd like to get a nice camera that's probably the farthest thing down the road as far as new equipment. Uh, the lavalier mic, that's, that should be coming in this weekend. So hopefully in the next two to three weeks, you should start be getting uh, the videos with the lavalier microphone and hopefully a much better quality of audio. Uh, and then the other thing is the uh, editing software and the audio software. So those are both uh, like monthly subscriptions and they're substantially more if you're using them for I guess commercial reasons which this would be since I do plan on getting monetized uh, so I would have to go with the higher level uh, subscription plan on those and I'm just I'm, as of right now I can't justify taking the money away from my family to put into this uh, when in all reality this doesn't uh, give anything back and I don't want that to sound bad because I really enjoy doing this. Uh, I enjoy the work that I'm doing. I enjoy being able to share it with y'all. Uh, but financially speaking, it doesn't give anything back to me and I have a hard time justifying taking money away from my family's finances just to have a little bit more fun for myself. Uh, but 
in the future, down the road. I'm saving up money, I'm, I'm working my way, so a bit at a time, I'll be upgrading and improving. So stick in there, it'll get better. I promise, it, it'll get better. All right, let me show you what work I've been doing on this recently and what's gonna be in the next video. All right, so here's my battery box. Battery will sit right in there. I'll have a tie down for it and we'll loom the wires up through the frame to the front. And what I need your help with on the front side is the exhaust. So, let's see. Alright, so there's our exhaust port, and as you can see, I'm kind of nervous about running it down the length over here and out the side, which I'd originally wanted to do. I wanted to run it from there down next to the block and then dump out the side right here. But my main concern with that is I don't want the exhaust to run directly under the fuel line and the carburetor, because one small leak could put the whole thing up in flames, and I'd rather just avoid that if I can. So, some of the other options I've thought of would be to come from the exhaust port and then down between this control arm and the tie rod and then run under the tie rod to right here and then dump out the side. And another option, it would be a little bit more complicated, but, would, but it would involve coming out of the exhaust port and wrapping up to the front So it would have to come out of here and then somehow run along the front and either dump out the front on the bottom or come around to the other side. But I just feel like that would involve a lot of bends. It would be getting close to the plastic on the hood. It could get too close to the head and keep the head from being able to cool itself off properly. I'm not really 100% sure, but I'm really starting to think my best bet is gonna be to come out of that port down between here and then over to this plate and just dump out of the side right here. So I don't know. Let me know what you think. That's a tricky one. All right, well, that's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. And I'll see you on the next video. Well, that's not bad.